Hey everybody, it's uh, Tony Disco here with uh, another episode of Painting for Pleasure. I've been promising you guys uh, how to, that I would go through the process of how to do trees. So many of you have asked me about this and I'm going to take a couple of basic steps here to sort of work this out. Um, we'll do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to do a, a tree with foliage and I'm going to do a tree uh, beside it that uh, is, uh, has no foliage on it whatsoever. So, let's take some basic steps first of all. We'll do, uh, we're going to do a, a basic, a basic look here, a basic tree that uh, we're going to, we're going to put together. And we're going to start ba with, with um, let's just start with a foliage, a, a tree with, with a lot of foliage on it on the left hand side and I've got a couple of things around here that I'm sort of just working on take, taking a look at some of this stuff but es essentially what I need is some foliage and what, what's going to tell the story is what's going to happen outside uh, this area here in other words what I want to do is I want to create a few interesting shapes alright so as an example let's, let's, let's create a shape like this and maybe maybe I've started one over here and create another shape like this and maybe we'll create a crest a crown shape sort of very similar to something like that um, maybe one down in this area here and uh, maybe a couple of small ones you know and, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna essentially do some branches, um, maybe maybe there's going to be a limbs that are going to come out this way. Uh, maybe there's a limb that's going to hold come out this way over here, and uh, we'll just build this up here. It is. Let's say we got this huge branch coming down here, and we have the trunk of the tree coming down. Say something like this. Um, couple of other small so we got this big huge trunk coming up we got some limbs that are off but branches that are going to come off that and uh, and uh, we'll just sort of work this out okay and then of course the tree's got to be in the ground and I and I have it maybe tilted slightly at an angle um, we're going to come up here actually you know what that's not a bad thing and I've got a bunch of lines over here just to indicate some texture. Now, here's, here's the major issue. What, what generally happens is this. If we're going to do, um, if we're going to do a tree like this, what we want to do is to consider just, like I said to you before, some, just these sort of interesting shapes. I may put one right there as well. Um, and maybe I'll go, maybe I'll have one small one that's, lower but you notice the shape I have is sort of sort of half circles half circle here 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 half circle like over there one over here and then uh, I came down and I, I did sort of a V shape but again my shapes are just creating some interest right cloud like shapes I guess I guess they're foliage so we'll call them cloud like shapes all right now, I, I, it's sort of all scribbled. You, you probably can't see it uh, specifically, but essentially, they're just little cloud-like shapes that are that are over here that are indica indicative of my general foliage. And this is a tree that is uh, a leaf-bearing tree that falls off in the winter time. All right, so it's a deciduous tree. Those leaves will fall off when it gets cold. It's going to turn sort of colorful and, you know, fall off. And then the trunks are usually fairly large. Um, and the branches are going to come off that. So you're talking about oak trees, elm trees, birch trees, um, you know, those kinds of those kinds of cedars and so forth, those kind of trees. Um, so... And then we can make it somewhat interesting because all branches, and I want to just explain to you that I've been pulling these 
branches, say, or limbs, if you, what have you, off the side, but they all don't come off the side. Perhaps maybe, maybe they come inside. You know, come off the front of the tree rather than the side of the tree. Uh, so you got to be cognizant of how these branches play around. They all don't just come off the side of a tree when you're drawing this stuff or when you're painting this stuff. So that's my foliage tree there. Uh, my, my tree that's going to end up with some some foliage in it. And, and then probably what we'll do is on the other tree we'll just do let's say one over here and we'll, we'll come up like this and come over. Alright. And create this limb coming down. And as we come down and get thick, we get thicker. All, right, all, all, all of these trees are going to get thicker as they come down to the ground. And perhaps maybe we got a limb, a branch limb coming up this way. Then, then it kicks out, say, sort of like this. And I want you to notice how I'm actually drawing this, too. What I'm doing is, as I'm drawing this, I'm stepping back. In other words, I'm coming up here and I'm bending it. Um, um, I have a slight arc on this. Then I'm bending it with a slight arc coming over here. And then I dropped back from where I ended my branch here and put another branch over here. And I'm dropping back even more. Coming up this way. This is going to be the skeletal part of the tree. Um, and, and maybe let's continue this up here so that we have a little bit more going on. Okay. Uh, coming up this way. Over this way. Up this way. Notice that these are sort of short strokes. All right. Now, I'm not doing... I also want to do something else here. Let's let's bring this out, maybe a, a limb out this way as well, uh, just to just to sort of go through this process. And what I'm trying to do in all cases here is make interesting interesting shapes that are exciting. It's not straight. In other words, I'm not drawing a a tree trunk that is absolutely straight. I've got I've got this crooked. I've come up here and I bent it this. I started here, came up about to this far, and bent it this way, and bent it that way, and bent it over. So I'm I'm breaking my movements up so that I'm creating interesting movements or interesting shapes in all of this. So I've got a tree here and a tree there. So we'll start with the tree. Maybe we'll build some other stuff in the background with more trees, maybe. Uh, that are coming out, but this is just basically to show you that um, I'm going to bring this down a little bit more to me. All right, we have a this is coming down here. Okay, so I've got two trees side by side. One is going to have foliage on it. One is not going to have foliage on it. Um, now, I suppose the first thing we want to look at, and the first thing we want to do, is from a structural point of view. Look at the best way to do this in the least amount, the least amount of work, least amount of effort. Okay, what I did is I just wanted to clean my palette so that my palette was here. There's my palette. I cleaned all of the garbage out of it, make it nice and light, nice and white. Start with. Um, okay, so I'm not. This is, uh, there are other trees, we may want, I might do another one, I'll just do these two in here, and then maybe we'll do one more. So let's, uh, let's talk about getting some water, putting this together, working it out. So, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to take, and I'm going to get a, my, we're, I'm looking for my round brush here. I've been, I've been doing some painting and... I need to get a big here. We'll, we'll use this one right here. So what I want to do is I want to take um, a 
big. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take my big a, a big mop brush like this. All right. So so I'm gonna work with this one right here to start off with. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just come in here and I'm gonna wet. I'm gonna wet the areas that I want to create with with clear water. Now. You know, I'm I'm using there's a slight there's a slight tint to this water right now. This this stuff that I'm putting in here, uh, and you can probably pick that up. It's a little bit of a yellowish cast, and that's fine. That's okay. So, got a big brush, and I'm wetting the leafy massy area with the clear water, and I'm gonna basically try to avoid the edges when I do this, but I'm going to pick up uh, a mixture here of I'm going to sort of get my yellow, I'm going to get my new gamboge I'll show you what I'm doing let me just put this brush right here for a second alright, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick up my new gamboge okay and maybe a little bit of orange. No gamboge. So I'm yellow, it's a little bit of yellow mixture with orange and I'm sort of I'm gonna start with that and put in a, a little bit just a tad of cerulean blue to it. All right, so I'm going to come in here, and this is wet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scumble this in. I'm going to sort of if you can see what I mean. Now, what's happening is is that I'm actually taking my yellow and my blue, my cerulean blue and my yellow. Here's my yellow, a little bit of yellow, yellow orange. All right, and uh, and I'm I'm sort of pushing, I'm pushing into the into the area of my tree, and I'm going to do that with a little bit more pigment. In certain areas. Alright, so this is wet. It's wet into wet, staying away from the edges. And you can see what's happening. I'm creating, I've got this sort of image, this, this, these shapes. Here's an interesting shape right here, here's an interesting shape right here, one here, one here. I'm creating interesting shapes that are massively foliage like. I don't know how else to say that, but they had, they tend to have the the feeling, if you will, of foliage. Now, along with that, um, I'm going to take some of my paint, and I'm going to get it a little bit, take a little bit of my cerulean blue, I'm mixing my cerulean blue again with my yellow, and in the dry area, I'm going to actually hit this is the dry area now at the top of this area. I'm just going to actually come up and scuffle or scumble or, or draw down. So it creates um, creates some interesting patterns. All right. So you can see it's a little rougher. I stayed away from the edges, but a little bit rougher around the around the surface. Okay, so that, I scumble a little bit of that stuff in the dry area. Now that's pretty wet as it stands right now. So we're going to let that set for a bit. So now while the painting, well, all of this is still wet. I, what I do want to do, because the, if the light's coming down from, let's say, the top, and it's hitting the top of the canopy, underneath the canopy, there's some darker areas. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually come in here and pick up my darker blue, my uh, French ultramarine blue, and I'm going to mix that with my yellow to create a darker green. All right, and I'm going to end up coming in here and in the wet areas underneath. Not you don't want too much of this. So let's just take here yellow. We'll actually put a little bit of yellow ochre in this thing to change it up a bit. Okay, make it a little bit more olive in color. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add add some pigment. And this is a, this is basically pigment in the form of or or the consistency of uh, milk, I'm sorry, of cream or cream or, or butter. And I'm just coming in here and I'm adding a few darks on the underside. That's that's key. In the underside of of the uh, foliage. Okay? So I just put in some darks. While this is all wet, all of this is going to diffuse. It's all going to play together. You know, one color is going to wick into another color and it's going to form a third color and some of it is going to lighten up a bit. Um, so that's all very important. But it, what is also very important is when you're doing this kind of stuff, we need to see through the foliage to the sky or the land or the, whatever is behind the foliage. So that's important. It's important to leave these white spaces or these light spaces. And if you were to do a background, let's say, of, let's say, assume you did a background, first of all, of all sky, uh, sky blue, and you started to put this in, then you'd, you'd, you'd be able to see that sky through here. So what's important right now? Letting this dry. Okay. So, so over, I just shut it off over, over time, this dried out a little bit. So now we're okay to go and continue with this thing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to wet the tree trunk with clear water. And I'm going to avoid the edges. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just take some clear water. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to wet the tree trunk. And the trunk's coming down here. Wetting the trunk. Okay. So, with the trunk wet, what we have now is an opportunity to do something here that's very unique. So I wet the trunk. It's thoroughly wet. We have to now determine what side the shadow is coming on. So let's assume the light's coming this way so that the shadow is going to be on this side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to mix up my cobalt blue, a little bit of cobalt blue, and a little bit of burnt sienna to make a, make a sort of a light gray brownish color. And we're going to do this very lightly. This is actually, you can see this, this is sort of really, all right, a little bit of, little bit of my burnt sienna a little bit of my cobalt blue, all right, so I got this grayish look to it. And I'm going to come down here on the, because the sun's coming in from the left and hitting the tree, what I'm going to do is just simply come down here and I'm going to paint the right side of the tree. I'm not going to paint the left side. I'm not going to, I'm just putting my, I'm just putting my color in on the right side of this, all right. Now that's all wet. But I'm, I'm just putting it in there, and now I'm going to let it alone for a bit. I want what I want this to do is to just sort of softly wick over, which it will do over time. All right, so we'll get a little bit. I'm going to mix up a little bit darker, a little darker colors. I'll get a smaller brush now, and I'm not going. I want it not as wet. For my next, for my next 
uh, pass here. We'll get a little thinner brush. Um, let's start. Let's do this smaller brush here. You can you can see what's happening over here as this color was put in here, and it's slowly feathering over. It's slowly slowly working its way over to the light side of the tree. But I want to get this a little bit darker, and I want to I want it a little bit darker on the shadowy side, and I want the consistency to be a little bit heavier. I don't want it to be um, watery. So I'm going to mix up a consistency that's of my combination of my burnt sienna and my cobalt blue. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do a, more of a shadow. See, one here, right down the edge of the tree. And because this branch here is on the shadowy side of the tree, what's going to, I'm going to put that in there. Right? That's on the shadowy side of the tree. Now, that's my dock. This is watery. I'm just going to take a little bit of that out right there. So now I want to go to the other side of the tree and I'm going to mix it up with a little bit lighter. And I'm just going to sort of bring this in. See, see this? Very light. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing. Now the light's coming down here. So this branch, I'll, I'll probably change that. But that branch is going to be sticking over there like that. And we have a branch coming up here, and maybe one over there, and one up here. Now, you can see what I'm doing, because I'm just building, within this structure of all of these leaf, all the leafy stuff that's going on here, what I'm literally doing is building a small... Uh, Oh, I put my trunk in, from my trunk to my limb, from my limbs to, a, to branches that are going to come off here, and from branches we're going to go to twigs. So I got this coming up over here and probably going to be coming up like this and up here and maybe we got a branch that's going to come into this area right here. All right, so what I've done is, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm actually coming in here and I'm filling in the holes where I'm seeing through to the back side, to the light side, with some branches and some limbs. And some of these are going to be really dark and some of them are going to be a lot lighter. Right. So, in other words, if I, if my branch is right here, for instance, under this canopy, I made that maybe make that a little bit darker right there, and underneath the canopy here, probably up in that area, we'll probably make it a little bit darker right over here. Okay. Now, notice what I just did. I put. I put a dark area over here. My, my, my limb, my branches, my twigs, my trees. I put it over the darker part, not the lighter part, but the darker part. The lighter part, the sun's hitting it, so you don't want it over the darker part necessarily, but you do, you do have the license to be able to, to make this convincing. Put some of these branches. I don't want it to go that way. Okay, over the dark sections of the of the um, of the tree. That's perfectly okay. All right. So let's assume that I've got this here, and I'm going to come up. All right. That way, it looks like it's holding it up. And of course, because the sun is coming down on the top of it, what ends up happening is that you don't really see 
any branches that are going to be sticking up over there. Now, that that's being said, at that at this point, we want to take, and I want to do a very thin line here and here and here, and maybe like this, and maybe even some that are sticking up and sticking out. This is what makes this is what makes the trees somewhat interesting. And maybe we'll put a couple of spots in here that help it along to make it look more characteristic. Um, we're going to end up under here because this is dark in this area. We'll just deepen that in there, create a shadow. All right, talker underneath. All right, so so it's so as you can see, it's darker underneath with a canopy overlays it. And what really makes this stuff interesting is how you handle how it's buried in the ground as well. So if we're going to bury it in the ground, let's just take a little bit of clear water. Soften that up a little bit. And we'll just get some light ground cover. Grayish. And, and uh, remember, I wet this first, and I'm just scumbling it in. Okay, so that way it looks like it's planted in the ground. Not much more you can want to do. I mean, you can start to play around with this and do a lot more work with it and make it a little bit grayer, change the color up. But my gosh, the thing you don't want to do is to ruin the first in general freshness of all of this stuff. The one thing you can do is take a little, little rigger, okay, and in the areas that are, let's say, in the areas that are really light, you know, we can start to do some fine twigs. You can, you know, we can play around with it like this, but keep them nice and light. Don't make them dark. You know, trees are full of twigs and branches and everything else, but make, if you keep them light, they're not gonna, they'll work toward the overall ambiance of the of the tree, the effects, effectiveness of the tree. You won't have, um, you won't have a stark look like a lot of heavy branches. And if I have to put a couple of characteristic shapes in here that are like scars and things like that. I mean, all, you know, trees come out. Okay, so that that gives you the just just a general idea of, of, of how to do this. And you can also fill in a little bit more if I wanted to by saying, oh, okay, let's let's just uh, come back up here and give the outside of this tree a little bit more character. All right, because this is where, this is what tells the story. All right, 
So you're, you're seeing through, you know, n nothing inside here. All of the stuff that happens in here is okay. Just, it's fill. What really tells the story is just what ends up happening on the outside. To make that look more convincing. Now I'm, I'm sort of e eking my way into where I'm going to put the other tree, but that's all right. So what, what generally happens is this. I got my tree in here. Notice the ground cover. It's just... It's just there. It's not I'm, not, I'm not interested in it. Um, I don't want to make an over, overly, an over, uh, too much of a statement about it. Um, maybe we can, we got this little phone ring. So I just wanted to shut that off. Um, maybe we got this little twig that's coming off here. I don't know. Part of part of the tree that's doing this, and maybe we got some grass that's coming up. But you know, don't make it don't make it overly don't make an overstatement. Most important thing is that tree. Now you can build a whole series of these in a painting. I'm just telling you how to do the the basics here of of just this this first pass. So let's go on to um, the the basic tree that I have over here uh, which has been outlined for us okay so we're gonna go back to again how do we do this well how did we do this one we did it the same way so what we're gonna do is take clear water and we're gonna come in here and we're gonna make we're gonna wet we're gonna wet the, the trunk of the tree and the key limbs okay wet it We'll start with this. We'll wet it down. All right. And what I'm going to do is just take my, you know, let's just take, we'll use yellow ochre as an example. We'll take a little bit of yellow ochre. And now that it's wet, all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint down. Again, the sun is coming in this direction. Assuming the sun is coming in this direction, we're going to do this. We're going to come over here at the edge. Okay, and we're going to paint down, and as I paint down, just at the edge of the tree, I'm actually changing up the color as I do this, coming down. Okay, so it looks it's on one side. Okay. All right. So it's on one side, right? Okay. So we're going to just take a little bit of water. And we're just going to sort of soften this up a little bit so it moves over. All right, so it's going to wick over, and now I'm going to put the scars in, or let's say this, I'll, I'll do the scraping. Um, we don't know what, we, if it's a birch tree, for instance, I'm going to scrape some of this over or put something that's darker, but I've got to let that dry a bit. So this is a warm color, and I don't know if I can do this right now, um, but maybe I can, let me just see if I can s scrape a little bit of this. I'm going to just scrape a couple of this, these things over here. Now I just pulled it over a bit. Okay, so I got a warm look over here. Let's go for a cooler look. Okay, on some of the limbs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue and come back over here and mix it in with my burnt, a little bit of my burnt sienna. The blue I'm using is just cobalt blue. 
I've just got a gray area and we'll we'll just say sort of come over here and we'll just darken up we'll darken up this limb here and perhaps maybe uh, even darken up some of this up here maybe some over here what we're doing was, is we're just arbitrarily darkening up areas. I'm, now I'm going to take my strong brown. Let's make it even darker. And my pigment is going to be not only darker, but it's going to be more the consistency of um, butter. And these are dry, so what I'm just going to do is I'm going to sort of just start to scrape in some darker two darker areas and again watch what I do okay I'm taking my brush and you notice the angles this is a straight angle that's a straight line that's a straight line now by straight there's a slight curve to it but it's essentially straight it's coming up here and then cutting up this way and then cutting that way and then cutting this way and cutting up this way and coming over this way and I'm gonna do the same thing with some of this stuff over here All right. Dry paper. Okay. A little bit darker on this side. We'll come up here. What I'm trying to do is to not, I'm, I'm trying to make interesting shapes. All right, I don't want, I don't want my limbs to not look natural. I want them to look natural. Okay. All right, one, two, scar here. Let's put a limb here. All right, so what I'm looking for is natural a natural look to this tree. And notice what I'm doing, too, is this. I've come in here, and uh, let's say where this meets, where this limb meets this limb, I want it a little darker. Where this limb meets the tree trunk, I want it a little darker. Where this limb meets the tree trunk, I want it a little darker. Okay? Where this meets this, darker. A little darker right there. I'm dotting this. I'm actually coming in here and, and taking these areas and putting little dots where they come together. One here, there, there. Why? Well, because it creates more interest. All right. Now, assuming that this is a birch tree, I don't know, could be a birch tree. Of course it could. Um, maybe I can, I don't know if this is still wet enough to scrape, probably not. Nope, it's not. So if I can't scrape it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my thin brush and I'm going to create little scars. Okay. Scraping is better if I if I if I could have should have done this as but but you can also lay the scars in this way as well. See? So 
So I've got this wonderful birch tree. Okay, so I've got my bare tree there, kind of cool. Um, we want to do the same thing with what's going on down here, which is plant it in the ground. So let's wet the area down here. Okay. And perhaps maybe we'll make it mound like. Maybe some leaves here. Let's just I'll tell you what, we'll just raise some raise some grass from that. And again, I'm not interested in bringing your attention to the ground so much as I am up in here, up in the area. <coughs> Excuse me, where the limbs are. Now, as this dries, what happens with all watercolor? It's it lighter, right? So we got to just probably dust darken up certain areas. But essentially what you have here is you're, you've got a nice, nice tree. And the tree trunk is interesting. Why is it interesting? Look, it comes up this way, moves over this way, comes up this way, moves over this way, up. It's interesting, all right? Now, again, going back to what can we do with this tree to make it even more interesting? How about some nice light branches off that tree? Um, maybe a little bit of, yeah. So, we're up here. Oh, I'm making them yellow, but let me just make them a little bit darker. Maybe we'll make some, yeah, make some red, make some warm. Any, you know, this stuff, it's, it's very funny, but any color will do. Um, it's just how to create just interesting branches and limbs and shapes and so forth. So you can see what ends up happening. You can continue to do this until you're blue in the face. I mean, you can do a lot of different things here. Uh, all right. make, make these longer, much more interesting. Um, same way with the stuff over here. But the other thing you can do is this. You can always take a little bit, maybe there's some leaves that were left on this thing. I know they shed, but they sometimes they don't always shed everything, right? And this will show you how you can build um, some foliage on a tree that's pretty much shedded a lot of the stuff that it's already... And, and, it's, and basically what you're doing is you're taking the brush. I'm just, this is an exercise, so I not care so much about the actual tree, but taking the brush and you're, you're, doing, you're doing this, you're scumbling. All right? So what you're doing is you're, you're saying, hey, I got, I still have foliage here, but it hasn't been shed totally. So see how interesting that can be? So there's a lot of things you can make, make out of this thing. I can do a number of trees that are back here and all have 
uh, have have them all different. Um, you know, but this is summer foliage. This is sort of fall foliage uh, as the, as the trees are shed. And then there's the stock winter foliage where there's absolutely nothing on the tree, and that would just be what we really did uh, there. And so that the spring would be the same thing. You'd see a lot of these buds. Actually, on the spring trees, you'd see a lot of these little tiny buds that would be. I mean, as an example, you'd see you'd see stuff like this. which would look more like buds that are first starting to come out. Okay, so we have a couple of different trees that we've done so far. Winter tree, add a little bit darker stuff down here. Sun's coming from what direction? What do we do? We didn't do, the, we didn't paint the whole tree. Notice how this is already wicked over, this wicked over. All we did is paint the edge of this tree, right? Made it a little bit darker up here, changed the color up down there. Nice birch tree. This could be a, an elm tree. Um, ma you know, maple tree. Okay, so let's, let's go over here and, and do a, we did deciduous tree. We can do a couple of others too. Um, I'm just going to do, a, 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 what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to do a winter, sort of a winter uh, spruce tree with, with snow on it. So what I'm doing is I'm just leaving, I'm, I'm just sort of drawing in some of those areas that I want to reflect the, uh, the actual branches of the tree. And uh, we'll go up here and... All right, so I'm just sort of, you know, coming down here and we'll, we'll do this. Now, as I'm drawing this, you'll notice when I'm doing this, I'm, I'm sort of drawing the characteristic shape um, of this tree. It's spread out this way, all right? And uh, what I'm going to do is we'll just throw in... Some, some background stuff over here. Um, I'll just use this half. Okay, so what's happening? I've got, I've got a big area right here that, that um, is going to be snow-like. I probably should divide this. Well, I don't have to, I'll, but I'm just going to do it like snow-like. Okay, and what we're going to do is just come over here and I'm going to wet the area. Now, theoretically, this is clear water. <laughs> it's not clear water at all, my gosh. I had a lot of yellow in this brush, sorry about that. But it'll work to our advantage anyway, so we'll just, we'll just put it in here. Because I'm just going to make, make this all background stuff anyway. Alright, so let's put in... Let's just come over here and, and we're going to just put in a sky cobalt blue uh, that's not supposed to be uh, we're going to make it grayer by adding adding some brown into this thing here and make it wet this up a bit and make it grayer okay So, I need to get some clean water because I don't want to use, um, I don't want to use all of that up. I want to make this snow, and if I, if I don't do it correctly, it's not going to work, so hang on. Okay, hopefully we'll just continue this with clear water. And we're just wetting the whole paper. And what I want to do is I want to create some snow. And so we're going to just take a light, some sort of light color, and we're just going to come in here and wisp some snow in here. That's all I'm doing is just, just taking a real light tone. 
have, uh, uh, this is a lavender. I'm using actually a little bit of lavender. I'll come in here with a little bit of cobalt blue and maybe even... Now, the reason for... You know, notice what I just did is I just sweeping over this thing and I'm going to let it softly... softly just wick up. Just create some real soft stuff. And I don't want to, I don't want, what I, what I don't want to do, what I'm fearful of in it is to overwork this. So that's all I'm going to do here. I don't want to paint it. I don't want to manipulate it. I don't want to try to do anything more to it. All I'm going to do is just give it a little bit of a tonal value. Probably add just a touch of purple in some of these areas, like right here, to sweep a little bit more purple in there, which is basically a mixture of my uh, cobalt blue and my uh, opera together um, just to give it all right see what I'm talking about uh, just just to give it a little bit of, I'm gonna give it a snowy effect okay now I'm taking Now this is this is dry down here, which is basically what I need to do is wet it a little bit more. To get this correct, all right. My ground. I'm taking a real strong amount of just pure burnt sienna. And I need a lot of pigment now. A lot of pigment. Mix it with a little bit of my cobalt blue. Okay, a lot of pigment in this. And push it around about like that. And now, these. this is where it's important. All right, so I need to bring this sort of sweeping down this way. All right, sweep it down. And as I go up to this area up here, I need to get it darker. Okay. Now I know I pushed it too far over the edge. I have to let it dry because I need to put in some harsh lines to help this along a little bit more. But to give you some example, that's all really we're doing. We're just giving you the overall illusion or impression uh, of uh, this is a snowy scene. Now I gotta you have to forgive me for this up here because this is just. This is just not, that's all incorrect. But, but, you know what? We can, we can actually work that out. We can actually come over here, take some, pick up some pigment, say my yellow ochre. And all I'm doing is I'm just adding some water, yellowish ochre water, in this area back here. What's more important is what's happening down here. This is just going to go. I'm just going to leave it alone. I have to let that all dry right now. So we'll do that and we'll be back. So. I now have a situation where this has been dried out a bit. I'm going to make some of this a little bit darker. I need my small round brush that I was working with, if I can find it, um, over here somewhere. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to make 
I'm going to use a, a consistent. I'm going to use a consistency uh, of um, butter. My mixture of blue and my burnt sienna. And I'm going to come in here, and along with this, which is up here right now, I'm going to put in some. hotter edges all right and as I come over here this is going to start to reflect some of the dark harder edges along with my rough my soft edges here Okay. You can see what happens is that when I do this, I'm actually creating some more interest. This is where this snow, the tree comes out. Maybe it says a. Maybe it's got a. Trunk right there that comes up over there, and some of this comes out here. And probably that's enough. Um, a little bit of water down here. And just soften some of this up over here and we'll just throw some grass in this area. Okay, so you can get the feeling for this, and this should probably be out a little bit more from a balance point of view, out that, that way and just off the page. I just pushed it over too far over. But nonetheless, you can get, you can get a good feel for that. And, and you know what we have over here is we have some Just light trees that are in the background. And again, that, that's this scumbling or scuffling kind of effect that we have back here. Just to give us a, a feel or a flavor of something off something going off in the background. Um, so if, I mean, I, I, I don't know, you know, how else to do that right now. And we can play with this. We can, you know, you can do, so you can do all kinds of good stuff with this. I mean, if we, if we want to fill this in and we think we need a little bit more and it's, there's too much snow on here. Yeah. You know. Lots you can do. Okay, so that takes care of a little bit of snow on the on a spruce type tree.
Okay, let's assume you're going to do, let's assume you're going to do a sort of a group of, I don't know, sort of jack pine or pine trees that are out in the, out in the wilderness here. All right, we're just going to, we'll make this one, make that one really tall. And um, along with that, maybe in the foreground, we got this sort of couple of big. big trees so these are these are in the background um, we're just gonna we'll put them out back here I guess something like this I just I just want to create create something and this is down here in the foreground so all right so what we have here is we've got an area right here where I'm gonna leave this dry right now I'm gonna sort of paint all the way around it so what I would do for this is, let's assume this is our, our real quick painting. Um, we want to just do something. I want to take put a background in here, so I'd wet this. Okay. Wet this whole area back here. Maybe even wet the mountain. Um, bring in some of my sky, which is basically, I've just taken cobalt blue here. And we're just going to run the cobalt blue in for, for, for a little bit of the sky. All right down into the mountain area. And yeah, I'm going right over my trees. I um, have my, my mountain range in the background. We'll just make that. We'll make that a sort of added some more blue to it. Keep it, keep it all sort of the same. And um, we'll make this all grass, or just all. So I'm just taking yellow ochre. We'll just mix it all together. Okay. Um, a little bit of orange. Let's brighten it up. Um, so again, it's, it's, all I did is I just put a little light tone of value here, increased the value of blue down here, went from blue to, into blue orange, and, um, and that's it. You know, that's it. We're just not going to do too much with this at all. Um, So what we're going to do is we're going to let that, I've got to let that dry now because i got to let it dry enough at least so that I can put some value in that uh, pigment that is more consistent with, more consistent with butter as an example. Um, and I'm not really trying to do a painting here so much, uh, but let me, let me just bring this down here to the, we'll just bring this all the way down. Let's pretend it's a painting, all right? So, we're just going to let that all set up, and I'm going to start to look at what I want to do over here. And what I really want to do over there, so I want to do a couple of things. First of all, what I want to do is I want to take and dry out the area right here that I have that's got my tree in it. I'm, I know I'm going I'm to paint this darker anyway, but let me just sort of dry that out a bit. Right, I'm going to actually make it make all that stuff darker, and this is pretty wet, and I want it to get to the point where it's damp, so I can start to put in some uh, stronger pigment. And the pigment I'm going to use is going to be more green. I've got this mountain that's over here, all right? And we'll we'll define that a little bit, actually a little bit more. Um, give it. 
we'll give it some more definition, maybe some more. Some more value over there and, and let it go turn to blue. Alright. Um, again, this is this area right here is still very, very wet. But but I'm gonna to start to sort of softly build my trees, my trees in there. And this is just nothing more than cerulean blue, and I'm gonna use a little bit of cerulean blue with cobalt blue here. Um, and, and you see what see what's happening is, is that because it's so wet, it's spreading. So we're softly spreading this stuff. We're just going to give you the impression that there's trees that are back there. Now, not way back here, of course. Um, we're going to end up changing that up a bit, but I would need to get a little bit darker um, pigment. Uh, so with my darker pigment, I'm going to go with my French ultramarine blue and my yellow ochre. You get it nice and heavy. And um, take a look at I start to put some of this stuff in. Still a little bit on the too wet side. What we're what we're doing is we're creating we're creating a forest. Now again this is all really too wet, but it is creating some it's softly allowing the pigment that I'm putting in there to wick up and create the illusion of those pine trees. Alright, now I'm just changing up the color a bit. Uh, again trying to keep this stuff it's a bit in the wet side. See what's going on here? I got a sort of a interest, some sort of interesting, interesting look back there, and I've got I've got the same thing happening in this hill back here. It's, all right, so, but what we have to do is in order to do that correctly, we have to change up the color. We need to we need the color to go recede. Right, so I'll let that all dry. In the meantime, I've got this sort of hill that's what looks like a hill that's going to come down over here. And I'm not even going to touch all of that stuff there. I'm just putting that in to give you, to show you that you can create those fur looking trees very softly back there in the mountains. Uh, just by, by overlaying different values and uh, you're, it's the timing. It's the timing of applying the correct amount of paint, dry enough on the paint so that the, let's say, the consistency of butter into a damp area that was a wet area spread a little bit more than I wanted it to. But again, um, as long as it dries, I can con continue to go back and build on this. Um, so I have these wonderful, wonderful trees that are here. And what did we do before? What do we do? Okay. Yeah, we, what do we do? We wet them, right? 
So let me come down with water. Come down with water, trunk of the tree. Wet the trunk of the tree there. And I'm gonna wet the trunk of the tree here. Now I'm not building a painting so much as I am building. I'm just trying to help you or show you how to handle these trees. And again, the sun is on what side? Let's assume it's on this side. So I'm coming down here with my pigment on one side into the dry area. And as I do that, I'm changing up my value. All right, it's going to be a little bit darker at the top. And the same thing is going to do, I'm going to have the same thing on this particular one right here. I'm going to come down here. This just got a couple of, we got a couple of trees side by side. A little bit of yellow ochre. We'll do this a little bit of orangey. There we are. Okay. Darken this up here. Darken that up. And we're going to end up making this one fatter. How's that? Okay, so we're just basically rounding this all out, making it nice and dark at the top. And at the bottom, we're going to make this up. Uh, well, what we're going to do is I'm going to pull this tree, the bottom of this tree, right in here. So it'll... All right, so we got a couple of big trees that are out in front. And we'll basically do the same thing with this, and that's we'll just create, we want these on the ground. Okay. So one of the things that we've just did is we put our base in, our trees in. We're going to change up in value. So what I'm doing is I'm just lifting out some areas where the sun's hitting it. So, and then taking my thin brush and uh, create some texture. Okay. All right. Um On the side is dark. And a little poker out, little sticks out there. Uh, let's get some. Let's get this real dark up in here. Okay, can you see that? A little shadow there. And uh, let's create some texture in here. Maybe a little darker values.
Okay, so we got these sort of tall. Um, th these are going to be sort of, I guess, piney trees. I, I don't know what they, you know, pine trees, jack pine trees. I don't know. Just put some marks up there to just indicate. Some of those. And texture. Okay, so we've got these nice trees that are in the foreground over here. Let's build up this a little bit more. We've got these trees that are in the background. Bring that a little bit forward. Um, Big rock back there, a big mountain back there. Something. Something's happening. Maybe we'll put one trip one one over here, foreground. But nonetheless, what I'm really trying to show you is is that it's relatively easy. No, I, I take that back. You got to be careful about my my statement of relatively easy. Uh, what I'm what I'm really suggesting here is is that if we don't want to do a lot of work, um, we want to get this stuff down so that we get we get a good feeling of the type of uh, forest what we're creating here. You know, just make this nice and dark. Is doing a couple in the foreground. Nice little, nice little painting. So what we have right built right here is just some just basically an interesting little situation where there's some trees in the background a few in the foreground um, a couple of big tall pine so we've got a variety of just looks that are going on okay so um, I guess that's what I'm gonna call a day call it it I'm just gonna say hey Sign it, and we'll call it a we'll call it a day. So we've had all kinds of good trees. This way to create nice, interesting landscape. A uh, fir tree in the snowy scene, and of course the two basics that I just redid here, which is the foliage tree and the one without foliage okay so that's it thank you I appreciate you being with me I'm your host Tony Visco and uh, remember just keep smiling and have fun painting because we're all about painting for pleasure nice to have you with me take care bye bye